The boiling point of a substance is the temperature at which it can change its state from a liquid to a gas throughout the bulk of the liquid. So let's have our review from the past lesson. We have studied about ionic compounds and they are formed when a metal which is located on the left side of the periodic table transfers its valence electrons to nonmetals and nonmetals are located on the right portion of the periodic table and they form an ionic bond. And when we say ionic bond, this metal like Na transfers its valence electron to chlorine and what happened is that Na becomes a positive ion and chlorine becomes a negative ion. So these two ions are now bonded and we call it ionic bond which is very strong, very am high amount of heat is needed to break this bond, okay? Now let's go to polar covalent compounds. When we say polar covalent compounds, remember it is composed of atoms. One is more electronegative and the other is less electronegative. And so, that is why there is an unequal sharing of electrons. And that is why there are negative ends and positive ends in the molecules. So example is H2O. This is the molecular structure of H2O. As you can see, Oxygen, which is more electronegative than hydrogen, has negative charge. And what happened to hydrogen? Positive charge. Because oxygen attracted all the electrons from hydrogen. This hydrogen atom, likewise, is positively charged because oxygen attracts, attracted all the electrons from hydrogen to oxygen. So oxygen now is negatively charged. Similarly with ethyl alcohol, the presence of oxygen in the molecule, similarly more electronegative, will attract electrons from hydrogen and having now a negative charge again and positive charge on the end of hydrogen. So that is why it is an example of polar covalent compounds, an equal sharing of electrons. What about nonpolar nonpolar covalent? So there is equal sharing of electrons precisely because it is composed of atoms that are less electronegative. So, there are no positive nor negative ends in the molecule. Let's have example, methane, CH4. As you can see, this is the structure of, molecular structure of methane, carbon and hydrogen. There is no big electronegativity difference. That is why there is no positive nor negative end. And there is equal sharing of electrons. And that is a nonpolar covalent compound. So here we have a table showing the boiling points of common pure substances. In the first column, we have metals, lithium. Look at the boiling point, 1,603. This is lithium. When you look at the periodic table, lithium is here. 
group 1A. And then we have also aluminum. And look at the boiling point, 2743 in the periodic table. Here is aluminum, group 3A. Now, another metal is sodium. Look at the boiling point, 1,156. And where is sodium in the periodic table? Here is sodium, group 1A. Okay? Another method is iron. And look at the boiling point, 3,134 Kelvin. And where is iron on the periodic table? Here is iron on the periodic table, right? So, we can now compare the boiling point of metals with the boiling point of the non-metals. So, let us see. We have non-metal neon, and here is the boiling point. In the periodic table, where is neon? Here, group 8A. Another non-metal is nitrogen. This is the boiling point, 77.35. And it is another non-metal. It belongs to this group 7, oh no, group 5A. Next is oxygen, another non-metal, 90.18. And it belongs to group 6A here in the periodic table. Another non-metal is hydrogen. Look at the boiling point, 20.27. And here is hydrogen in the periodic table. And look at chlorine, another non-metal. The boiling point is 239. Here is chlorine, group 7A in the periodic table. So what is our conclusion? The non-metals have lower boiling point than metals okay so the first column it shows that metals metals have higher boiling point than non-metals so let us examine let us examine the third column in the third column we have Ionic compounds. So how do we know it is ionic compounds? Because the first element are metals. So like sodium, magnesium, another sodium again, and calcium. So how do we know they are metals? Look at the periodic table. And as you can see, sodium again is here. And magnesium is here group 2a right and calcium is here group 2a again and it is combined with another another non-metal chloride fluoride of course hydroxide is a polyatomic ion consists of non-metals oxygen and non-metal hydrogen and iodide is a non-metal group 7a iodine read so we know if it is an ionic compound it is composed consisting of a metal on the left and a non-metal on the right so this sodium chloride is an ionic compound and look at the boiling point Look at the boiling point of magnesium chloride. Look at the boiling point of sodium hydroxide. Look at the boiling point of calcium iodide. 2000 plus, 1000 plus, and 1000 plus. And let us examine the boiling point of the nonmetal. Um, I mean the, the covalent compounds. How do we know they are covalent? Because it is composed of non-metals, carbon and hydrogen, carbon and oxygen, okay, hydrogen and fluorine, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen. So, these are non-metals. And look at their boiling point. Look at their boiling point. Look at their boiling point. They are lower than the boiling point of ionic compounds, right? 
And we can also compare the boiling point of polar and nonpolar covalent compounds. So we have water, which is a polar covalent compound, 373 is the boiling point. Ethanol, another polar covalent compound, the boiling point is 351. Comparing, and another one is hydrogen fluoride, the boiling point is 293. Let us compare it with the boiling point of the nonpolar methane. Nonpolar, an equal sharing of electrons, 109. Nonpolar carbon dioxide, 194.7. So we can compare that. The boiling point of nonpolar covalent compounds compared it with the boiling point of the polar covalent are lower. Okay, so we can say that ionic compounds have higher boiling point than covalent compounds and polar covalent compounds have higher boiling points than the nonpolar covalent compounds.